Congratulations, loyal watcher! You have unlocked the Teching Tumble DLC package featuring Flying Tumble! Success! Check back tomorrow for the reveal of the Helicopter Tumble and the Dirigible Tumble! Also, later we're gonna release a, a, a deep sea diving DLC, so that should be a lot of fun. Presenting proof that magic exists, my beloved audience. No matter which way it spins, it always stays perfectly balanced on the tip of my finger. That is truly incredible. Ooh. Okay, so today's video is uh, not about birds specifically. Birds are going to be part of the topic here because, as we all know, birds can fly. Man, that bird can fly! Yeah, but uh, no, more specifically, we're talking about flight, okay? And of course, flight is an amazing thing. Humans have been dreaming of the ability to fly since time immemorial. Um, and of course, there's a lot of anime and manga characters with the ability of flight. And one of the first such characters to exhibit this power in One Piece was our buddy Pell, the strongest warrior in all of Alabasta. Just... Just take that for a sec. He was the st considered the strongest in all of Alabasta, and we saw how far he lasted, okay? But now, you know, Pell's pretty cool. You know, he had neat face tattoos, survived a nuclear bomb blast, so you gotta give him some credit, right? But um, he was also one that uh, broke some very contentious information to uh, the audience here. When he first revealed, I'm just gonna set, actually, I'm gonna set her on uh, top of Nami here. <laughs> Nami, there's a bird on your head. Okay, that's funny. Um, you know, when he first showed up to save V, Vivi from being attacked by Baroque works, you know, Vivi was up against the wall there and Pell just comes down, not only transformed in his falcon stage, but he also attached, like, Gatling guns on his wings and he's a giant bird, so he just comes raining down out of the sky like a freaking, uh, World War II fr fighter pilot, like, da -da 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 -da! and everyone's like, oh, freaking out, diving out of the way, just tearing up the freaking street, and then Pell lands and you think everything's gonna be okay, like, come with me, princess, and then Robin shows up and just jacks his up but as, up until that point you know it was really impressive like he flies out of nowhere and he's got the gatling guns and he's the strongest warrior in alabasta this guy can handle himself and then he transforms into his hybrid form which is still pretty intimidating and he says you know i have the power of the tori tori no me model falcon or the bird bird fruit model falcon it is but one of the five identified devil fruits that allow flight Okay, so, <laughs> minor correction to that, um, it's actually one of the, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine that are actually directly involved with flight, and there's actually like, one, two, three, four, seven, eight, there's like ten more that could be considered a, a type of flight, maybe not flight exactly, or flight with certain conditions, but definitely the ability to get up off the ground and then levitate to various locations so there's there's a lot more than just five okay now I think what Pell was trying to say, you got to take that statement with a few, you know, grains of salt, and you actually have to look at what he said. First thing he said is, it is one of the five identified devil fruits that allow flight. Remember, you have that devil fruit encyclopedia, which has, like, the depictions of each fruit and what they look like, and that way you can determine, like, what kind of fruit it is before you actually eat it, based on probably the type of the fruit itself. Like, oh, it is a, it's a pineapple and has a very, I mean, each devil fruit has the swirl pattern, but maybe it's like a very distinct differences between each one. Like, maybe there's a, a difference to how many swirls are on the fruit. Like, if you have a pineapple that has 15 swirls exactly, then you have the Barra Barra no Mi, which is Buggy's fruit. Or, if you have a pineapple fruit that only has seven swirls on it, then you have a completely different fruit that's like a zone or something, you know? So I'm sure there's like minute differences on how you can tell. Like, Blackbeard knew right away that the fruit that Thatch got on the Whitebeard crew was in fact the Yami Yami no me, right? So, you know, there probably is distinct differences, even though there's only a certain number of fruits you could have eventually. I mean, there's hundreds of devil fruits, but you're gonna run out of fruits to base them on at some point. There's bound to be, like, more than one fruit that looks like a, uh, a banana or, or an apple or something, you know what I mean? And I'm sure the color might be different as well. The color is also a, a distinguishing factor. But all of the known and identified fruits go into that encyclopedia, right? And so that's what Pell was referring to. Out of all of the fruits that are in the encyclopedia, which probably probably isn't even half of all of the devil fruits, considering you got some really rare ones. You got ancient, mythical zones. Hell, you even have a lot of logias that are previously referred to as like very hard to find, like the rarest of the standard type of fruit. So that makes sense there. 
Uh, also, what he might have meant was he is one of the five identified zone types that have the ability of flight. That might be something else he was going with here. He wasn't referring to... Because even if you consider, like, Logias, even Logias can kind of fly. Not... Not exactly, like, maybe a really long distance, but if Crocodile wanted to, he could just turn into sand and just whoosh, on the wind. Same thing with Enel, you know? I mean, there are some types, like Aokiji's uh, he he and no me he can't exactly fly with that, but I think we've seen Kizaru do that, we've seen Akainu do that, so we're not even getting involved. This list doesn't even include all the Logias that can, like, Akainu could just turn into magma and just, he's on top of a freaking uh, platform and just... <laughs> Now, is that really considered flight in the sense that he can just turn into magma or freaking, um, you know, crocodile can turn into sand and then float across island to island? Probably not, but it's it's a type of flight. You're getting off the ground and you're moving through the air. I would consider that flight. Here we're going to go through all of the different fruits in the series that can straight up allow the user to fly. Like, it's not even debatable. Like, you know, um, you could just eat the fruit and you can fly. And then there's some other fruits that might not be like a standard like maybe you have to train with it a little bit in order to unlock this flight ability like even luffy right now with gear fourth can actually fly can he do it for a very long distance no he can't go gear fourth and like you know use his uh his his elasticity you know like basically he's using geppo but he can't do that to go from like island to island but he can definitely fly right now so there's fruits like that that maybe you have to train with a little bit but in terms of just the fruits that allow the user to fly upon just eating them, right? So, of course, first we have Pell's Fruit, the Tori Tori no Mi model Falcon, but then we have the Mythical Zone Tori Tori no Mi model Phoenix that Marco has. He's a bird. He's a bird of revival, and he's made out of fire, but he's still technically a bird. He's got wings. You know, he flies, and, and that's what Marco does. He's just a bird that happens to be on fire, and it's blue fire, which makes it twice as cool, right? I'm sorry. What, what is the exchange rate for fire equaling cool, for like the multiplying factor? Is it times two or times three? I could have sworn it was times two, but yeah, this is always changing every now and then. But yeah, so Marco, not really much to say there. He is a bird, okay? It's just a mythical zone. Then we actually have two fruits that were introduced in Dress Rosa, which were the Mushi Mushi no Mi, the, the insect insect fruits, uh, model rhinoceros beetle eaten by Kabu, or Cub in some translations, and then the model Hornet, which is terrifying because I'm absolutely just uh, no hornets no hornets keep them away keep them away <laughs> But uh, that was eaten by Bion, who was also a Tontata, and uh, yeah, so she can turn into a, a wasp or a hornet. Wasps, hornets, they're different. Uh, but that allows them to fly. Um, now, what would happen if an actual human, like a normal-sized human, ate the insect fruits? Would this allow them to transform into tiny little bugs, or would they be able to keep their own size? They would just be a giant hornet. Like, oh, Actually, you know what? I would prefer a giant hornet to a tiny hornet. And you know why? Because a tiny little hornet comes at you, you know, you're pretty much at its mercy. There's nothing you can do. That hornet, he can spin it around you. You can't hit it. You can't swat it. It lands on you and stings you and ah, and then it gets away scot-free. If it was a giant hornet, like not even super giant. I'm not even talking like a giant hornet. If it was like the size of this iced tea bottle, hornet flying at me, you could at least like BAM! You could punch it, you know? It'd be like, get away from me! BOOM! It's a bigger target! You know, you bust out the freaking baseball bat or something, you know? But, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But hey, regardless of whether or not if you ate it as a human, if you shrink down to the size of a bug, which I don't think would happen, or if you maintain your same size, you know, the wings would be still be proportional, you could still fly using those fruits. And those were only two examples of the insect fruits. There's probably a lot more different Mushi Mushi no Mi types out there we just haven't seen yet. Um... So yeah, out of all of the ones I, we're going to be discussing, like, I don't think Marco's Phoenix fruit was an identified fruit in the encyclopedia, but the Mushi Mushi no Mi's very well might have been. So those two fruits actually might have been one of the fr uh, two of the fruits that uh, Pell was referring to that could actually be in the encyclopedia. I think that makes sense. Um, we also have a non-canon character who ate the Tori Tori no Mi model Eagle. Uh, no, it was actually a dog named Buzz from the 3D movie, which 
wasn't really a movie. We've watched it before on movie night. It's only like 35, 40 minutes long. But yeah, it was a bulldog that ate the eagle fruit and could turn into an eagle. So there you go. Same basic fruit as Pell's, uh, essentially. Um, we also have probably the most famous out of all of the fruits that allow flight is uh, Shiki's. You got to talk about Shiki. Now, Shiki does not have a zone. His is a paramecia called the float float fruit. And it's a very simple ability. It allows himself to float and fly as well. Like he can actually telekinetically sort of like control where they go. So it's not just like, you know, he can make this remote float and just keep it hovering in one location. No, he can actually direct it, you know, make it fly around like where he wants it to go. He also used this ability to make islands float as well as his ship and everything. He used this to escape Impel Down. Uh, he can make anything non-organic float. The only exception to that is himself. So he can make himself float, but that's about it, if you know what I mean there. Um, so yeah, Shiki, you know what? I don't even know if Shiki's ever gonna show up, you know? We were, we were talking about this very briefly in Reverie, you know, because Oda was talking about, like, the lurking legend and everything and and it, the sad thing is you know i don't think shiki's ever really going to have a point in the story i think shiki's moment was when the movie strong world was about to come out you know there was a lot of press there was a lot of excitement like who's this new character shiki and oda you know he drew that strong world chapter zero and he also included him and in, this is when impel down was going on and we got shiki name dropped a few times but I think that was all really just to build hype for the movie, if anything else. Then after the movie came out, and the movie was good, Strong World. We need to watch that on a movie night sometime. But, you know, the movie comes out, and the hype dies down, and then you move on to the next movie, and then the next movie after that. So I think Shiki, I think most people have just kind of forgotten about him in the series. I don't think Oda's going to be like, okay, now, you know, a good eight, nine years, whatever, how long, however long it's been since Strong World has come out, now we get Shiki's introduction in the manga properly. I don't see it happening, but Shiki was a cool character. He had a steering wheel stuck in his head, so you know he's cool, right? All right, of course, how could you not forget Kaido, who's a dragon, who, on top of being a dragon and, you know, giant imposing figure in the sky and can breathe fire, or I don't even really know if he could breathe fire. He can more just, like, kind of breathe explosions, so that's a thing. Uh, he can also manipulate with the, with the weather, but beyond all that, yeah, he can fly. Yeah, he, he, he could fly, and it seems like he could fly a pretty long distance, too, because he's a giant dragon, so I could believe that Kaido could just turn into a dragon if he just wanted to fly over to freaking Marineford or Marijua. He, he could probably do that if he really wanted to. Um, the, probably the only reason he hasn't is he would probably run low on sake along the way. That's like his, his gasoline, you know, his petro. He needs, he needs to refuel, and there's only so, I mean, he has a lot of hands as a dragon, but there's only so many bottles you can carry with that, you know, so that's probably the main reason he hasn't done it, but once again, it's a mythical zone. We actually, fun fact, don't even know the name of his fruit yet. All right, it, it's probably just, you know, because we see the ancient zones are like the dragon, dragon, nomi, model, pteranodon, or, or whatever, allosaurus, or whatever. So in Kaido's case, it's probably just mythical zone, dragon, dragon fruit. Uh, but it might be model, Chinese dragon, who knows. But uh, probably most definitely not in the Devil Fruit Encyclopedia. But in fact, yes, definitely allows flight. Going along with the ancient zones, we have King who is revealed in the last arc, you know, kind of like one of the top tier members of Kaido's crew, actually might be number two right behind the big dragon man himself, and he has the power of the ancient zone, dragon dragon, or the Ryu Ryu no Mi model Pteranodon, which I used to say Pteran, Pterandon, Pteran, ter Pteradon, I used to say Pteradon, Pteranodon, actually, it was um, the Venture Brothers that actually corrected me on that, yeah, there's an episode of the Venture Brothers where they shoot, like, a giant Pteranodon out of the sky, and Doc is like, w did I, do was it in fact a pterodactyl? I was like, no, he was a pteranodon, you bastard. And it was a bunch of island of furries or something. Go, go watch the episode. It's season five, Venture Re Libre. It's a great episode. But yeah, we got a giant pteranodon, so capable of flight there. Uh, let's see, what else, what else? Um, oh, Buffalo, I forgot about Buffalo. So Buffalo, yeah, a lot of people forget about Buffalo. But Buffalo, member of the Doflamingo family, has the power of the spin spin fruit. All right, the guru guru no me, not the guru. Guragura no me, the Guru Guru no me. All right, and this allows him to basically.
basically spin any part of his body. So if Buffalo wanted to, he could just literally stick out his hands like this and just it's like his body turns into a propeller. He's got the hair, like the four leaf clover things jutting out of his head and he can make those spin. He can make the lower half of his body spin. And so he does that to basically become a helicopter human. And, you know, baby five rides on his back and they're part of the commando unit, the Pika army. And so, yeah, he is totally just basically like a plane or a helicopter. In his case, he could just get up and touch off and then he can fly to islands and they have done that in the series. So yes, uh, Buffalo is another one. I, I think maybe the spin spin fruit might have him in fact have been in the devil fruit encyclopedia because it's just an ordinary paramecia nothing really all that special or unique about it but yeah so those are all of the fruits so far that just you eat them and you're able to fly you eat the pteranodon fruit turn into a pteranodon and you fly eat the spin spin fruit and just whoa i can spin my body now and you start levitating off the uh, ground and you could fly fine but there are a few other fruits that some of them uh not exactly flight but give the illusion of flight or maybe you have to train with them so uh case in point here isho's fruit uh fujitora we don't know the name of it it's probably the gravity gravity nomi or the gravity gravity fruit allows them to manipulate gravity i mean just the ability to manipulate gravity kind of gives you the ability to fly. I mean, sort of. Now, it's not the exact same thing, um, but if Fujitora wanted to, he could just make, like, the ground beneath him. Like, he could stand on a boulder and just make the boulder, you know, like, lift up into the air. And then um, we've seen him before when he was lifting up all the debris from Dressrosa. I think he was able to control where it went and, like, targeting and everything, and he was able to drop that giant meteor out of the sky directly on where he wanted it, so there's definitely a level of control here. Um, so, yeah, that that's flight in a sense. Um, we also have Buggy. Now, Buggy is only able to fly when part of him is still on the ground. The way his Bara Bara no Mi works is, as long as his feet are stationary or touching the ground, the rest of his body can remain in the air as long as it's within a certain perimeter around him so usually what buggy will do is have someone else like luffy or one of his crewmates hold his shoes and then run with him and buggy is able to fly as long as he stays within a certain perimeter of that person carrying his shoes but it's still technically flight even though part of his body is still on the ground or has to be stationary doesn't really matter in buggy's case though because you know he could separate his body so you know like 95 percent of his body is flying but only five percent isn't i still could consider that flight to an extent um perona now perona is only capable of flight when she's in her ghost body okay so she cannot fly when she's in her physical body but her soul looks just like her regular self it's just that she can't uh directly harm anybody she's intangible but can she, she could still be seen and everything uh she can also send out her little ghost minions to fly around and you know scout the area or anything so and there doesn't really seem to be a big limit on that um it's not really a limit in terms of like buggy with the perimeter it's just a limit in you got to be careful because your body is stationary and useless and vulnerable um, if you fly too far away in fact this might be an issue kind of with Brooke like imagine if Perona left her body just lying in bed and she went out to go and you know look around Muggy Island where she's at and let's say her ghost got lost in the fog unless her ghost has some sort of like homing signal like radar like I know exactly where my body is at all times which hey it might in fact have that uh, unless she has that and she gets lost her body would just remain vulnerable and would eventually die of dehydration or something and then her spirit would just <gasps> poof, just poof out of existence. So probably best to stay pretty close to your actual body as much as possible there. But Perona does allow flight. Um, we also have Brooke. Brooke is kind of the same thing where he can't fly in his actual corporeal body or his skeleton. Yo ho ho ho. But he can separate his soul and his soul can float around. Now it's a little bit different than Perona's ghost. Uh, it doesn't actually look like Brooke himself. He's just like one of those Kotodama things, those souls from Japanese mythology that just floats around that just happens to have his face on it or lack thereof and uh yeah but he can still do all the things a ghost can do he can you know uh phase through walls and everything and just act generally spooky and freak people out he don't think he can really possess anybody yet or anything of that nature but um yeah it allows him to fly and escape tight situations like when they were locked in that cage at fishman island he can Woo, i can fly you know so there you go um here's a here's maybe a controversial one but i'm gonna throw it out there what about kuma yeah, Kuma 
Kuma does have the ability to fly. Like, he, we don't see him like, Kuma man away! But he does. Like, he can send other people flying in those bubbles of his to certain destinations. That's definitely flight over long distance. He he's even stated he could send people to the other side of the world if he wanted to. But he also uses this ability to get around, you know, with his, uh, his pawpaw fruit powers. So, yeah, in a sense, like, if Kuma's at Thriller Bark and he's like... Okay, I am done here with Thriller Bark. That swordsman was truly the most manly man that ever manned. But it's time I get back to Marineford. All Kuma has to do is just poop, and then makes a bubble of him for himself and just flies off. Kuma has the ability to fly. Concluded. There, done. Uh, Mont Dor, I just wanted to bring him up really quick. Not really flight. It's just he can use his books as, like, platforms in the air. But we don't really know the limit of that. I mean, if Mont Dor could just create an endless supply of books, he has an endless supply of floating stepping stones anytime he wants it. Kind of like in uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Vento Areo, you had that one stand, I believe its name was Craftwork, where they could throw, like, little pebbles in the air and, like, stationary, like, freeze them in the middle of the air so you can, like, walk on them. That was a really cool stand ability. I forget the name. Uh, you remember all the names of the stands. It's kind of hard to remember the names of the users. Like, Babyface was just revealed in the last episode. Babyface, really weird, really awesome stand. Have no idea what the name of the user is, but, um, yeah, it's cool. Like, sort of like that. So, yeah, I mean, Montor... Once again, couldn't fly long distances. It's not even flight. It's just stepping. But, you know, he can get into the air and he can, like, you know, avoid obstacles and stuff by just creating a bunch of books and just walking over them. So, there you go. It's worth noting, anyway. Uh, Miss Valentine, also not real flight, but she has the power of the Kilo Kilo no me, so she can make herself super, super light, take out her umbrella, and just... Whee! float up into the air and she can just wind just can carry her wherever she needs to go and then she can activate her fruit to make her heavier to either crash down into the earth really fast or just gently lift her back down but um yeah she can get airborne with her kilo kilo powers uh, next up, we of course have Robin Chun. We all know Robin is an angel metaphorically, but did you know she is literally? Because she is! Check out this! Yes, uh, so Robin, yes, she can use her Hana Hana no Mi to make a bunch of arms, and she can form them into wings. And she can even flap the wings. So, I mean, you know, just go by bird logic here. If you make the wings big enough and you can flap them, uh, yeah, you could fly for a little amount of time. You ever see a chicken trying to get airborne? It's like the the saddest thing ever but it's still adorable you know and robin's adorable so it makes sense right so yeah uh she uses this during uh thriller bark and a few other times i think she used it once in a uh, punk hazard as well um yeah so she can when she's falling from a great height it's basically like her parachute she can make her arms and then she can just flap them a few times to give her a kind of a easy landing she can also carry people but it's more gliding than flying um you know or falling with style however you want to say it and, and robin definitely has style Style. Um, after the time skip, I think she could stay airborne a little bit longer, but yeah, not something she can just, like, when she's standing on the ground, not something she can just make a bunch of hands, and then maybe she might get off the ground a little bit, but she wouldn't be able to go very far. It only really works when she's falling from a great height, and she wants to catch herself, or if she's on top of a, like, let's say she's on top of a, you know, giant castle, and she wants to get to the ground, she can just jump off and use that ability to just you know, get back to the ground again. So it's a useful ability. And uh, finally, I wanted to end this out with Doflamingo. Also, I mentioned Luffy. Yeah, Luffy in Gear 4 can use his elasticity to fly that way. So technically, the Gamu Gamu no Mi also allows flight if you just train with it a certain way. Now, Doflamingo's ability is also, I think, requires a little bit of training first, but he's had the Ito Ito no Mi for a very long time. But uh, it's the weirdest thing because it, the way that I think Law explains it is he can send his strings through the clouds and then draw them back. And so he could basically, kind of like Spider-Man, sort of, where he could just snake his string through clouds and just fly that way. Now, keep in mind, the clouds in the One Piece world are not just made of, like, water vapor, you know, because there's nothing... You try running a string through a cloud, you're not going to get very far. But they're made of that uh, the pyrobrine stuff. It's, it's like a solidified version of seawater, you know, that can also float at the same time. It's weird. It's like sea prism stone has this chemical in it that when during the water cycle, the water evaporates, this chemical called pyrobrine gets sent into the atmosphere and congeals to make island clouds. And so it stays, it, it's, it's buoyant enough to stay in the air, but at the same time, it, it's solid. So you can theoretically run a 
you know, a cable or a string in Doflamingo's case through it, and then you can just pull yourself wherever you need to go. Uh, you just gotta make sure of two things. Number one, you gotta know where you're going, and number two, you gotta make sure that there's clouds, you know, present. Because if you're sailing on the air, on the air, and all of a sudden you run out of clouds, which is something that you gotta be careful of in the in the new world, especially because all these islands have really wacky, um, freaking weather patterns, you know. So you could have an island that has a cloud, and then you get into the air and then you're on the open ocean and you're sailing through there and then the next island might be a desert island and there's no cloud cover over it because there's no moisture and you're screwed you know it's like either you go back to where you came or you're oh, shit, you know and you just fall into the water but uh yeah dofi can fly uh it's utilized much during dress rosa he fights sanji while airborne sanji can of course use skywalk which isn't a devil fruit power but sanji can fly too a lot of characters in one piece that can fly without even getting into devil fruits you know just the cp9 and the geppo and everything um and then of course dofi uses this when he fights against luffy gear fourth it's a it's an airborne battle we're getting more into airborne battles in one piece and i love it um but yeah i think i i think i talked about every single fruit that can allow flights even if just it's like gliding or just kind of just drifting on the wind. But let me know if I forgot any of them in the comments below. Um, I just wanted to address this because, yeah, I think if back then maybe Oda had a plan for like you know, oh, I'm gonna reveal these five, uh, Tori Tori no me models throughout the series, and maybe he never got around to it, or, or maybe Oda really did have the idea of just, like, yes, there's only gonna be five, and that'll be it. And, and then, you know, the, the, st the story progresses, and he's like, maybe he forgot about it. And even if you exclude all of the ones that are not zones and the ones that don't even include flight, like, you know, obviously Luffy's, you know, the, the focus of the Gamu Gamu no Mi is not flight, it's rubber. The focus of the Ito Ito no Mi is string, and that's just a byproduct of that. Even if you exclude all of those, like Kuma and Buggy and Perona and Brook, and even if you take away all the Paramecias, just the zones alone, you got Pell, Beyond, Kabu, King, Marco, and uh, Dragon. And I'm not even gonna, I mean, I'm not Dragon, Dragon, but Kaido's Dragon Fruit. Who knows? Maybe Dragon can fly too. But you got six right there. So the only way to make sense out of what Pell said is if he was referring to only five traditional zone fruits that were already identified, because those are still open. If you leave that open, then all you got is Pell, Kabu, and uh, Beyond. And those are the three traditional zones that are allowing flight. Everything else is either a mythical or an ancient. And then you have Buzz's fruit, but that's non-canon. So I don't know if you want to include that or not. But yeah, let me know what you think below. And uh, remember, guys, you can fly so very high and touch the sky and never ask why it is that I can't fly. I can't fly. I can't fly. I can't fly. I'm not even going to try, okay? Because last time I tried that shtick, I was doing a Dr. Stone chapter review. I sang the SpongeBob song, and I thought it would be a good idea at the end of the song to jump off of my bed, and uh, I bashed my knee off the side of it. Oh, yeah, that was a happy memory. So I'm like, okay, I'll do it again, but I'm not jumping. All right, I've learned my lesson. Techings can't fly. All right, have a good one, everybody. Enjoy the Super Bowl tonight.